Today we're interviewing Pastor Dave Wagley, who is the president of the Columbia Union Conference in North America. Uh, Pastor Dave, you have served on the nominating committee of the General Conference now how many times? Uh, three times. And the third time it was 10, 15, and now. So this is something that uh, a union president, it's, it's kind of ex officio or understood that a union president is always on the nominating committee? That's correct. It is a, a committee of uh, administrators, primarily union leadership, because uh, that the, these are the ones who work closely with the unions and also with the general conference, they attend uh, GC executive committee, annual council. So it is expected that the union president will be there to represent uh, his union. So it, you've, as, as you had mentioned, this is now your third session that you've served on yeah. uh, the nominating committee. Uh, this was kind of a little bit different. I mean, you've got a uh, you, you've got a virtual aspect. There's just kind of a hybrid uh, nature to us. Uh, tell me uh, about those dynamics. What, what's it like? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, as a union president, we do a lot of chairing of local conference sessions, nominating committees, sessions. Uh, I've had a number of years doing this, and a number of them. And I thought about the person who would have to do this meeting. It would be uh, very complex. You have the people in person. You have to be looking at the screen for the, what we call the Zoomers, the Zoom attendees, and trying to also make sure you incorporate their input into the process. So it takes somebody who's rather adroit, uh, first of all, cheering, and then also being on their toes to watch for all this different input coming in and processing. It's a real challenge. One of the things that has come to the floor and was uh, a mention is quite a concern when some of the nominations were, were made by the nominating committee was with regard to um, inclusivity and some of those things. How does that uh, committee, I mean, you're dealing with people from all over the, over the world. How do they handle those things? Well, I think the, 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 the chair is, is uh, very open you know, typical nominating committees, and this is no, nothing confidential, when you chair and you have a position, you open floor for nominations, and anybody can put names up. Uh, you know, of course, as expected, the elected president uh, will put up name or names because he wants to build his cabinet, and we support that in the local field, not one here at the general conference. But also the chair of the nominating committee will be certain that the members of the nominating committee can put up names, any names they want. And they come with their own desire for a certain name or gender or ethnicity. So it's really left to the nominating committee to do that. So do you see this kind of, you know, in the, in the um, uh, three times now that you've been on yeah. the committee, do you see this kind of... Um, of the, the influence of the world church becoming more uh, pronounced when it comes to these sorts of things? What do you mean by pronounced? You mean... Well, uh, in other words, uh, because the church has become so much more global, yeah. is it, is it uh, people want to have their voice heard? In other words, they want representation? They do. They do. I, I, it's, there's something I observed here, and it's happened before, and I think this is very important. Yes, I think people want to be able to feel they're represented and feel also they are inclusive. So in previous nominating committees, the secretary or the associate secretary is a woman. You will notice in this one, this time, there is a woman, Cheryl Shavers, from the Columbia Union, by the way, Allegheny East Conference. And, 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 and the nominating committee members were very supportive of that. That's why she's there. So they, they, I see a desire for inclusivity of more women in, in leadership and representation. So um, when, when all of this is happening and all of these people are presenting names and uh, from all over the world, um, the, the different divisions are having an influence. Uh, they caucus, they come together, and they uh, recommend names that then you enact on? Yes, yes, and that's what's happening today. You have all the, and last night, each division, those people who serve on the nominating committee will go out into private areas, rooms, and they will caucus together discussing the, the name of the leader, president, Secretary Treasurer, first the president, then the, then the president will sit with the caucus after he's elected, and, and, and they will decide together on that person they want to support, and then that has to go back to the nominating committee for the full nominating committee to, to vote upon. So, um, as you are, are thinking about 
um, your role as a leader in the church and your involvement in the nominating committee and this whole process of the general conference session. What do you see are some of the greatest needs of the Adventist church moving forward? I think we really, really need to dial in on uh, youth, young adult. Uh, our church is aging in some parts of the world. Um, interesting, uh, 20 years ago, the age of the church was the same age as Harley Davidson drivers because I had a Harley. <laughs> 52. Same thing the church. Now the church is getting older. As, uh, so I think with the fact that we're now moving up higher into the 50s, this is North America, other parts of the world is different. The church is younger. And I think what we need to do now, what we, te what, what we tend to do is once a person gets in, and, and, and I'm part, part of that, once you get into an office, you tend to want to stay. We don't like change. So I think it's important that the church drives hard the desire and need to incorporate our young adults, our younger, younger leaders, because we live in the 21st century. We live with the age of all this technology, all the Instagram, TikTok, all the communication we have today, all of this type of thing. And because of that, we need people who think young, who understand these things, and, and, and think of the framework of the 21st century. Too many of us have been young in the 20th century, and some of those ideas come forward. So I think the need one is, is that, and also I think we talk about continued uh, ethnicity, uh, continued uh, gender diversity, uh, all of this getting more women in leadership, because most of the church is women, are women, I should say, but... So I think there's a need to in more inclusiveness of these types of things. Thank you so much, Pastor Wagley. For the Adventist Review, I'm Phil White. Catch more of our content and events on AdventistReview.org.